Hello everyone! Happy New Year! Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour here in the evenings. And uh, I typically work on projects from beginning to end so you can uh, participate in the whole part of the process and uh, see how we do everything all the way through and work with us. So uh, thanks again for joining me. Uh, we are going to continue on the Splendid Sampler uh, to Quilt Along tonight. So here is the book. Look, the Splendid Sampler 2. Uh, we are going to do just an easy peasy block from this book today because Thursday, tomorrow, is new block day. So we'll probably get a whole pile of new blocks uh, to pick from. And then Friday is the first Finish It Friday of the year. So every Friday, we every uh, first Friday, the first Friday of the month, we do Finish It Friday, where we uh, pick out something that we haven't worked on in forever, and we work on that instead. However, this Friday, I think my knitting needles that I got from Massdrop, the interchangeable knitting needles, I think they should arrive tomorrow. So I think on Friday, uh, we'll do like maybe a little like box opening and figuring out of these knitting needles. I've never used interchangeable knitting needles before. I haven't actually knit in a little while. I do have some unfinished knitting projects to do, so I think I'll bring that out. And we will attempt to get these... Uh, interchangeable needles to work. Uh, I think it's supposed to be a little tricky uh, putting the needles to the cable, so we'll see if we can work through that. But I think we'll do that on Friday. So again, tonight we're going to do the Splendid Sampler 2. We're gonna do the Nourish block. So this is one of the blocks that has been released already. Nourish. And it looks just easy peasy simple, something that we may even be able to finish or just about finish tonight. And I think that's the name of the game here. Uh, ooh, and I got a neat little gift from my mom that I want to show you too, and I'm hoping that we can use this next week. So I'm going to flip you around and let's get going tonight. All right, thanks again, you guys, for joining me. This is the f first my first Facebook Live of 2019. So, all right, uh, this looks familiar. This is our uh, where I'm at with the quilt so far with my Splendid Sampler 2 quilt. We're doing the quilt as you go technique. So I have this, this guy is ready to go. Um, I just need to, I need the batting and I need the backing for it. But after that, we can quilt this. And then I am putting the pre-quilted pieces together, like these patches of four. I'm putting, I'm doing those uh, separately in, in fours. And then I'm sewing those fours together with this special binding strip in the middle here. So like here's one of my quilted pieces. And, uh, you know, here's another one. And it's attached with these fun little binding uh, stitches. So I'm hoping that next week, since this week's pretty short, next week I want to do another one of these. Uh, I love the back where you can see all the quilting. I'm just having fun playing and practicing, practicing with quilting. Um, it is like my new favorite thing. It's so fun. So one of the things that my mom got me for Christmas is this template set. So I'm super excited to test this out. Um, so like I said, uh, it's an early, uh, a, a quick week to this week. So next week, I wanna focus on the quilting for um, the quilt as you go blocks again. But like, look at some of these. So this is so we can do like, I don't know, arcs. And actually you can kind of pivot here. I don't know, you guys are gonna totally have to help me with this. There are some instructions. So here, here we can do like the scallops, which is nice. The, the, uh, the what is it called, the clamshells? Um, but like here we're supposed to be able to do like a whole little spinny deal. So, <laughs> 
I have no idea how to use these, but we are going to experiment with them and give them a go. They're the nice thin kind uh, that I can use on my, my domestic machine. So we're going to try those. I'm a little scared of them, <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll go through the instructions and we will, we'll see what happens, I think. Um, so that we'll do that with with this block, I think. I mean, around the pineapple, I probably want to just trace the pineapple, but I don't know. Everything else we can, you know, this with one of those weird star squiggle things in there would be cool. And same here, we could just practice the clamshells or something. So this is going to be, I think, my practice uh, quilting to see what these guys are all about. <laughs> and maybe we'll test it on one a one little scrap piece and stuff too. But yeah, I know there's videos on YouTube. I probably should check out a few of those beforehand, Vicky. <laughs> Maybe at least one just to see like, you know, what the nooks are and stuff. Uh, the quilting rulers, these, what are the brand of these? Oh my gosh, you guys, it just says RL06 on them. That's kind of not the best branding. Let's see. Oh, it's, uh, I think it's from Westerly. So Westerly Designs. Um, so Westerly is the same, uh, that's the same place that did my, um, my quilting foot. Let's see if I can find that quilting foot. Um, oh, here we go. So this is my, my Westerly decorative quilting foot. So I should be able to, like this will, this foot will fit right into these nooks and I should just be able to follow along these guides and it'll just go into that nook like that. So it's the same company, it's, it's Westerly. And these will just like be little bumps, it looks like. Cute! All right, so we're gonna totally play with this um, probably Monday of next week. But yeah, look, look at all these kind of fancy, kind of decorative dealios, little floral things. Ooh, fancy. We're going to try some of those, see what happens. So, all right, that was, um, that was a nice gift uh, from my mom. So, all right, you guys, let's get to it. I want to see if I can get this, um, this block maybe even done. I have to update my block index. I think we've finished a few more lately here. But here we go. It is Nourish by Debbie Grif Grifka. And all this is, it's, we're going to do a white background because all my backgrounds that I've been doing are white. And then all it is, is a little skinny appliques on top. So we are going to use our Steam Seam 2 again. And uh, we have the template in the back of the book. So we're going to get that out. And uh, we will just basically fuse these three shapes down onto our fabric. And I'm going to just stitch them on with my light colored thread. I'm going to do it the same way, the same way I did this bird. I'm just going to stitch it, stitch it right down, leave the edges raw. I think it's just kind of delicate and cute. And I don't know, I've been doing it a lot for this, this quilt and, I, and I'm liking it. So we're going to stick to it, I think, for the sake of making this a quick, a quick block. So, all right, starting out, let's get that template. Um, so this is, uh, this is one of the templates from the back. My other template is, I think, on the floor somewhere. I gotta clean it up. But this, luckily, is the one. Here we go. So here are our templates. So these are for reverse applique, so they will be flipped, ultimately. So you're gonna have to remind me that, hey, those need to be flipped that way. And uh, yeah, so first up, we'll trace these with the steam -a seam Actually, let's pick, let's pick our fabrics. So I know I want the white for the background. So we have, we have to cut a seven inch square out of here. But I do kind of like the bright colors that they have going here. So my, my fabrics are not bright. I'm doing the kind of blonde quilt, but I think, you know, if we pick out the brightest things that we do actually have, like that's pretty bright, um, I think, will get some like the same effect. Or actually, not necessarily even bright, but really kind of dark, the value being um, as contrasty to this white as we can get. So, you know, I even think, eh, there was something that I had that was darker than this, I thought. You know, this would be kind of nice. We could do like the bright, 
bright kind of citron yellow and then maybe this frilly brown. You won't see any of the frills really. You'll get like a couple here and there because it is just a little a little skinny line of it. But that's awfully, awfully cute still. But maybe it's too pale, the background. What else do we have that's darker? Not much, huh? <laughs> oh, here, we could do... Ooh, some of these, it's going to be tough to get our goofy big shapes out of it. You know, this is darker. This could show up against the background. And I kind of like these bright colors. Maybe, maybe this guy. One, two, three. Maybe I still do like this one. I just don't want it to be... I don't want it to fade into the background, which I think it might. Like some of these light colors might fade too much. So, you know what? Let's... Oh gosh, this guy's always so cute though too. This little gingham. Yeah, I think because there's barely any, there's just a teeny strip. Um, I, I don't think it'll show the gingham off enough. I think we're gonna go one, two, three. Uh, split the two yellows in the middle with, with this kind of brown color. So, all right, the end, we're doing that. Okay, I think that'll be cute. It'll be bright and festive still. So, all right, let's let's just give these a little iron, I think, while we're while we're at it, and then we'll we'll cut out our white so we have that ready to go. So let's head over to the wool cutting mat, or not cutting mat, the wool pressing mat, and let's just get this looking a little nicer. Okay, since I'm cutting a square, I'll start at like one of the more square edges, then I don't have to deal with um, all the little Frankenstein ends. There, that's looking good enough, I think. Um, I gotta grab my cutting board too, but before I do that, let's just, let's just give these guys a little press too. So we are going to use quite a bit of these scraps for these bowls. Wow, this is pretty small. I'm just going to press the whole thing and assume we'll get the bowl in there somewhere. Yeah, Gretchen, aren't these bowls cute? I, I think that it's going to be really sweet. And because they're just like really skinny with the white, it's just going to look like, they're supposed to look like, you know, like transparent mixing bowls, I'm thinking. got a tiny travel iron oh that steams oh that's cool it's so tiny oh fun robin that's a that's a neat a neat new tool yeah i'm, I'm excited to play with those uh quilting rulers so th they are westerly quilting rulers it, it looks like um again that's the brand of the uh the the foot that i got all right, let's come over here quick. I'm gonna go grab my cutting board. All right, here we are. So let's get our seven inch square out of here. All right, I'm gonna get my big ruler. Here we go, big square ruler. I'm gonna trim the edge and then we'll rotate it and trim the other edge. So let's see, seven inches. Oh, this is that side with the half inch, so let's let's go like this. Four, five, six, seven. Shoop. So, you know, our blocks are six and a half inches. But because we're doing applique, you know, we're handling things a little bit more and, uh, you know, we might not get it just exactly center where we want it. So because of that, the extra half inch, um, you know, because we're doing it seven inches instead of six and a half, that extra half inch will help us kind of maneuver later, I think. All right, I was good. Yeah, we'll, we're still going to rotate this whole thing kind of a rotating cutting mat. So, all right, so we got our good edge there, our nice square edge. Now I'm gonna measure 
right on the seven inch mark here to get our nice square. And really, since we are cutting this down, technically we don't need a perfect, perfect square here. But for this particular block, it does have measurements on where to place things. So it's gonna be helpful having a good seven inch square. Okay, and this way. All right, done with that white. Oh, no, Lean, I would love to do that. That has been on my mind for a little while, actually, doing a whole cloth quilt. Um, if you guys aren't haven't heard of what that is before, that's when you do an entire quilt with all the same fabric. So basically, you know, a lot of times it's even just white fabric. So imagine a whole a whole quilt with only one like sheet of white, basically. But in that quilt, you have so much decorative quilting that it's all about the quilting. Like, you know, in the shadows and the lights and stuff, um, you, just, you just only see the quilting on just one piece of fabric. That's a whole cloth quilt. And I don't know, that would be pretty, pretty neat to do, I think. All right, so... Let's get the steam -a seam and our template ready. So here we are. Again, it's on the, the template sheet that comes with the, with the book, with the Splendid Sampler 2 book. I'm going to get a piece out of here. I think I, ooh, yep, I have a piece started here. So let's see, let's see how many of these we can fit. So I need to trace these, these shapes. Uh, and uh, I need a little edge around them eventually. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna butt up these shapes right next to each other. I am gonna trace them a little farther apart. But I might still kind of try and hook them into each other, like rotate this and hook it in there, just so I can um, kind of maximize my space here a little bit. So I'm gonna grab my pencil. So again, I always forget what side to draw on, but we're gonna we're gonna treat. We're gonna we're gonna draw on this yellow pattern side, I think. So, all right, let's do this. I think I can. Oh yeah, it's kind of hard to see. I could get the light table out, although I think there's printing on the back of this sheet, so getting the light table out probably wouldn't help me very much. So I'm gonna try and be as precise as I can because this is the line I'm gonna cut on eventually. At worst, we'll at least get all these pieces stuck down tonight, which will be great. All right, so this is supposed to be the wrong side. So I'm gonna just write WS on there so I can remember that that's the wrong side, like the wrong side of the fabric. You put the light box under this to trace, Pat. Yeah, I'm thinking that might be a good idea. There is stuff on the back, so you have to ignore the stuff on the back, but oh well. Um, okay, uh, so here's where I wanna try and just squeeze in another one here. So yeah, we're gonna go like that, but I am gonna leave, you know, I wanna at least have like a good eighth of an inch around each shape, so you know, they suggest going at least a half inch away. I'm, a, I'm maybe a hair closer than a half inch away from the other shape. Oh, but I gotta actually get the shape into the piece here. So, into the paper. So we'll go maybe about right... I think right there we, we can get it all. Yep, okay, doing it. You know, I should also label this number one. This is the... Okay, I'm, I'm putting a T, a T here, because that's the top bowl. This is gonna be the, I'm gonna put an M for middle. This will be the middle bowl. So I'm gonna write wrong side M for middle. <laughs> I have a feeling I'll mess up on that real quick if I don't write that down. <laughs> Okay, now for 
that big bowl and let's see if we can tuck it in right here. This paper has, it's a little creased funny, so I'm trying to avoid that a little bit, but I think, I think we'll get it right here. This is the bottom bowl, but I think I'll remember that because it's the one that's the full shape. Okay, that's the outer bit. And the bottom arc. Okay, we are ready to trim these out. And then we will be able to place them onto our fabric. Okay. First, we need to just kind of get the paper, you know, basically separated from each other here. So let's just, I'm going to do it with a paper ruler or paper scissors. And now this is where I'm going to cut with a little bit of an edge. So I like doing like a good eighth inch or so. I'm just going to cut the whole thing out here first and then I'll separate them. All right. Let's get this out again. I want to see if there was any tips for applicating with these real skinny blocks here. Oh, did I lose my page already? I might have lost the page. I think it's on page 65 though. Okay, yeah. So, following uh, cutout shapes on the drawn lines and peel away paper backing. We fuse the shapes to the wrong side, trace the patterns onto the fuse of the wood, cut out the shapes, leaving a quarter inch outside. Okay, so we're just doing it the same way that we've always done it. I thought maybe there'd be like a little tip or something for, you know, I'm wondering, I was wondering if I should cut this out this center area before I fuse it. And I think I'm going to because, um, you know, I can use this little scrap that ends up in here. And if there's fusible web all over it, then I won't be able to use it again. So, all right, let's finish cutting out these sheets. Oh, I have to watch that Marie Kondo. Con oh, wait, did I say her name wrong just now? Marie Kondo? I can't. That's not right, is it? What's her name again? Um, I want to watch that uh, the life-changing magic of tidying up person. She's got that Netflix show now. And I, I want to watch that. It's on my list. So that's that's got to happen here soon. But yeah, I, um, you know, I think we're all kind of maybe in that, like, clean up all the stuff mode and and uh, for the new year and all that. Uh, Gina, I'm using I'm using Steema Seam two. So here is here's what it looks like here. Um, I would actually I haven't used it yet, but a few people here have. But I would recommend trying the Steema Seam two light. Um, that apparently is easier. It's lighter weight, so you can actually hand stitch through it. Um, when I, I mean, if you're not doing any hand stitching, then it doesn't matter. But um, I tried hand stitching through this, and it was really, really difficult. So the Steema Seam to light, um, that. I'm just cutting a little V out of here. That seems like it might be the way to go. So I'm just kind of like using up this steam seam two, and next time I'll I'll try that steam seam two light. So many different things out there. You know, you never, you know, you never know if you have the right 
thing, you know? It's That's the worst aisle um, at the store to go down, down, like with all the ear facings and with all the fusible webs and stuff. That's a... Uh, it's tough to know what to get, that's for sure. Okay, we have our pieces. Um, so now we can stick them to our fabrics. Um, we were doing this, this guy as our top one. So let's look again. Okay, so this is the top, T for top. So these are the wrong side. So in the, in the template, it said the wrong side of fabric. So let's see wrong and then if it's this way then it would be the right side okay I just wanted to test I had to physically test it so in the uh, in the instructions these were drawn in reverse because when we flip it then it will be the correct way so that's why we want to stick it on um, to the back of the fabric the the wrong side shape so when we go like this it'll be correct and you know what if we mess this one up it's not going to be the end of the world. It, these bowls are going to look cute tilting either way. So I'm just trying to kind of tuck it into a spot here. You know, we got all these kind of goofy shapes. I think we'll put it right there. So I'm going to um, peel off the backing. And so there's actually two paper backings on this Steema Seam 2. And I'm trying to get the side you can kind of see the the fusible in the middle there. I'm trying to get the I'm trying to leave that there on the yellow side and only pull it off of this white side, which sometimes sometimes it doesn't want to play nice. But the nice thing about the steam seam is that it has basically a sticker on the back. So I can stick this down and I can keep moving it and um, placing it again if I if I need to. Oh, and that's going to be helpful later when we place these on our white background. I can keep moving them around until I until they're just right. So, all right, this one's ready to be fused. Um, I'm going to just uh, I'm going to stick the other two on first. And this is the nice thing too. I can just stick this down like a sticker and shimmy it around all over the place, and it's not going to come off. Any other uh, fusible, you would have to. Uh, fuse it, you'd have to iron it first. Otherwise, it's just like paper and it's gonna fly everywhere. But this is a sticker, I can let it be while I work on my, my other two, which is great. Okay, this was our middle, or our bottom fabric. Let's see, I totally lost the other fabric already. We had a brown fabric somewhere. Uh, we might have to use the, oh, I found it. I was going to say we might have to use that brown check again, but I found it. All right, so this is the middle one. So uh, wrong side, middle. F let's flip it to the wrong side. Look at all these goofy shapes happening in here. Maybe we can tuck it in there. That's a good spot for it. All right, I'm going to tuck it in right there. So let's pull that white background off again and make sure that we leave that sticky side on the yellow edged bit. Oop. And we're just gonna stick it right in this nook here. Perfect, so we will fuse that down. Happy New Year, Grace. All right, last one. Let's see this bowl there. How about maybe like right like that? I'm going to again peel off this white background. Get rid of the fuzzles. And they're on the wrong side of the fabric again. We're gonna just stick it right in this nook. All right, let's fuse these down. Um, I always want to kind of forget to fuse these because they stick. It's almost as if they're fused, but with the iron, they'll get com completely fused down. So we'll do that, and then we will cut out these shapes. So back to the pressing mat, my favoritest thing. This The combo of this and uh, the wool pressing mat and the... Cordless iron, I'm, this is just still one of the best deals ever, this cordless iron. 
All right, so I'm just gonna, it's on high, and I am just gonna go over this piece for a couple seconds, and that looks pretty fused. Uh, you can kind of test if you can kind of pick it off a little. It's probably, probably not all the way fused. I think we're probably fine. So that's one of our bowls. It is a wrong side medium. <laughs> all right, let's do this one that looks like a, a protractor, right? protractor. So it doesn't matter if it's on the bias because it's stabilized by the steam seam. I think so, uh, Shauna. I mean, these shapes are not squares, so they're not, they're not going to completely go with the grain anyway. Um, so part of it is always going to be on the bias. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess the straight edge, I'm, I'm not on the bias there. The bias is a, the diagonal. So if you have your threads going um, this way and your threads going this way to make the woven, um, the woven fabric, if a diagonal cut um, or a diagonal stretch is on the bias and it's just a little stretchier than other places than if you're not on the bias. So it can sometimes cause issues. I think because this is super duper stabilized, I don't think it's, I don't think you're gonna have any problem whatsoever with the bias. Cause this stays on, this steam is steam, it, it's there, it's gonna stay there. So it, it is stabilizing the fabric as well. Oh, Gretchen, you got the iron, yes. I love it. It's one of those things like, eh, that's not a thing I need. <laughs> but man, when you don't have that cord anymore, it's pretty snazzy. All right, so I'm going to just trim this out of the big fabric. Um, you know, I, I'm actually going to trim right on this pencil line, but I don't want to leave any of the steam -a seam on the fabric that I want to use yet. Because if I had a little edge of steam -a seam here, and then I put my iron on it, I might wreck my iron, um, or I'd have to clean my iron. Uh, so I just want, I don't want any steam -a seam or any, sta any sticky stuff on there. So um, I'm just going to trim it out, and it's easier to cut. So let's cut this guy. So now I am cutting exactly on our pencil lines, our perfect little pencil lines that we did earlier. And I'm going really slow. I want this nice edge because this is going to be our actual finished edge here because we're doing raw edge applique, which means we are going to have a raw or exposed edge to the fabric, to the applique piece. So it is being stabilized by the steam seam. But you know, if you rub on it or after time, after a lot of washes, it's it is gonna get kind of a rough raw edge. But that's kind of it's cute. It's kind of the built-in beauty of raw edge applique. But I want to still cut it nice and straight. All right, so that's the outer edge. So for this inner bit, I'm just gonna put a little cut in here. Oh, Kathy, we are, uh, this is the first, um, ooh, I think I'm gonna, we'll go in this direction. Um, we are, we fused our steam -a seam to the fabric and cut out our background fabric and we are just about getting ready after we cut these out, we're gonna fuse it. We're gonna place it all and then fuse it onto the background fabric. Oh, you got one too, Jan Jana. Yeah, they are, it's just like such a treat to not have a cord, especially when you're ironing something really large or even in my small space here to like deal with a cord flopping around here when I'm at like a goofy angle. Uh, not having that cord is, Real nice. I think I kind of, I could have cut that a little thinner, but I think we'll leave it. So the, the steam -a seam is definitely making this figure less delicate, because this is a pretty thin strip we got here. I'm going slow too, just so I don't accidentally cut it in half. All right, here's our last little bit. Ah. All right, 
here we go. Oh, it's so sweet. Let's see what it looks like on the white. It's fun. It does look like a transparent bowl, doesn't it? Oh, it looks like a happy, smiley face. All right, there's our first one. It's a little scrappy scrap. All right, um, let's, this is the wrong side. Wrong side, middle. So this is our middle piece. And again, I'm going to just kind of trim it out of here so I don't have any residual. I don't want to accidentally cut this stuff up here. Um, so I don't have any residual steam a seam on my fabric that I'm going to, you know, my fabric, fabric proper up here. All right, toss that away. Now we'll do our cutting again. You know, what I didn't do is on the template piece, there were little dotted lines on the template and that's where it overlaps. So that's where the little dotted line is where it was gonna overlap the other piece. So I forgot to draw those on. So we're just gonna kind of guess. Um, we're gonna just guess by we're gonna look at the look at how uh, she has it there. There are measurements on where to place, so we're just gonna use those as best we can, and you know we'll just overlap it a little bit. But it's nice having that little overlap because then you don't have to worry about things perfectly lining up or you're cutting it perfectly. You can just overlap it a little bit, and it'll be right. Ooh, I think I gotta cut a little bit higher up in there. We'll pivot with the scissors. There we go. The scissors it was so nice for this. All right, rotate. Zoop. There we go. When you straight stitch around the edge of your piece, does it fray? Yeah, Pat, it will fray. So any raw edge applique, even if you're stitching a ton of stitches, um, you know, it's, it's popular to do like a, a, a tight zigzag stitch around. I think even with that, you're technically having an exposed edge. So it is gonna wear, but that's kind of what makes it pretty too the raw edge of it all. So it, it's kind of part of that kind of like little kind of rustic look, I think. It's not gonna fall apart. It's gonna still be stitched down, but it will have that raw, that raw edge. And you know, I'm, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily my favorite look. Um, I think it's perfectly fine. I like it because it is fast and easy. <laughs> and sometimes that's that's the name of the game here. Oh, this is going to be so cute. Look at it. Cute! Okay, let's do our last one. Okay. And again, let's let's trim this guy out so we're not mucking up our fabric. There, done with that. And we'll trim it out. I think I'm trimming these all out differently. Cut the two bottom overlap pieces first that time. So here's our top piece. I actually really like needle turn applique. I think it's so relaxing to do, especially if it's all turned under right away um, with one of those techniques where you can tuck under the seam allowance um, before you start stitching it on. That's just so relaxing and it just is so cute and pretty, the needle turn applique, but man, it ain't as speedy as this, that's for sure. So uh, sometimes you just want to get Sometimes you just want to get the job done, right? So, raw edge applique it is. And actually, I, I've been doing that a lot, this this uh, Splendid Sampler 2, and I'm really thinking it's looking cute. So, um, even if it wasn't fast, I might actually choose it. Okay, let's check this out. And we'll get the book out with, with the measurements again here. 
Um, oh, it's so cute. Look at it. So easy, too. All right, let's take a look at this again, just so we can um, start to see what our measurements are supposed to be like. Um, all right, so there are ooh, lots of measurements. So the top ball, one and an eighth and a half inch, half inch, and one half inch. So, you know, normally I would just eyeball this whole thing, but you know what? Today, why don't we, why don't we try and do these measurements here? So I'm gonna get my ruler out. I think we'll just get, which mm -hmm. ruler should I use? Oop, dropped one. Oh, here it is. I'm gonna use my, my six inch square, my six and a half inch square ruler. I think this will help us. So let's just do what they say here. So um, normally I would do this right on my pressing mat, but because we are using that steam -a seam 2, we have the sticky side of this. So when we tear off this paper, we can stick it to wherever we want and keep moving it around. So first let's uh, take the paper backing off. I'm gonna just, uh, so because these are my nice edges now that we've cut, our nice, good, clean edges, I don't wanna mess them up. So I'm gonna put like a little X in the middle here of the paper. And instead of just like picking at the paper, which would kind of make my edge start getting it raw right away, I'm gonna do that X and then I can pull the paper off from, from the middle. See, and it's, it's gonna wanna, oh, this is gonna stick to me. It's gonna wanna just come off from the center then. There we go, see? All right, so this is that sticky, sticky stuff. Um, from the steam seam too. So let's, uh, we needed it one and a half inches from this side. You know, I could put a mark there, but I think I'm gonna just kind of touch it there. Oh no, it was one and an, it was one and an eighth. Oh, let's go this way. One of these, so one and an eighth is right there, and then one and a half. So, oops, let's get a little higher for you guys. There, so I did one and an eighth and one and a half. That's our first measurement, according to, like, on, on in the book. Again, normally I would just eyeball this, but, eh, thought why not. I'm just going to stick the corner right there, kind of temporarily hold that there, and... Over on this side, we're gonna do the one and a half and one and a half. See how close we get. So we're doing the top one first because each layer will overlap it. All right, so it looks like my seven inch thing is a little small because I'm overlapping a, a hair there. I'm gonna just pull it over a little bit. Kind of recenter a little bit. But there, I think, I think that's about what they had going on here. Yep, I think, I think we're going with that. So I'm uh, sticking it down. So again, the nice thing is that I do have, it's that got that sticky back. So I can stick it down and it's not going to move while I putz around with these other ones which is great. If I didn't have the sticky back, I would have to like hold it there or tape it there and then uh, um, take it off later. Or, or when I fuse it, take the tape off and, and everything. But now I just, it can just stick there like a sticker. It's, it's like nothing. I can just move on. So, all right, I'm taking the paper off of this one. Come on, paper... All right, there we go. Okay, again, let's do our little measurement. So they want one and three quarters from the top. Man, I would say just eyeball this, this thing, but <laughs> 
it's kind of putsy doing all this measuring. But all right, we're gonna do one and three quarters there. And it looks like it's a little further in. I'm just gonna temporarily tack that down. So this is where we're gonna over, overlap our edges here. So chances are it goes up here to overlap. And then here it's one and an eighth. So that's like right here. So it's a little further down. I think we're gonna shimmy it. There, it's kind of more like that. And we're overlapping both. So, all right, I'm calling it there. Cute. Man, these are all so cute. All right, last one. Get my little X in there again. Man, they get cuter and cuter. There's always a part on every one of these blocks. I always kind of like them. Sometimes I'm like, ooh, that's gonna be tough, or you know, it's at least a challenge. And but there's always a point that I fall in love with every single block. And I don't know, these bright colors going down against these this white is just kind of neat. It looks more transparent than I thought it was going to. So that's kind of cool. Alright, so we are going, this is straight across, it looks like, and I'm just gonna kind of temporarily let that lay and it looks like it's seven eighths from the bottom it said oh gosh so that's like oh wait that's the side with the half inch on so seven eighths oh that's looking pretty good there and one and an eighth from here looking good and one and three eighths from there so that's that's looking pretty good too I might try and center it a little bit more, but it's looking like maybe, why bother? Yeah. Oh, it's still not down all the way. Fine, we'll shimmy it to the left a little. All right, that looks pretty straight, I think. It's hard because I got this kind of weird fold in there, but I think we're good. Let's stick that down. Yeah, all right, let's fuse that. So um, we're we're ready for, yeah, just to, to fuse. So again, with the steam -a seam I can just lift this up. It'll all stay there and uh, um, we can just move right over here. So if you don't have the steam -a seam uh, if you just have a, a fusible that has the fusible on one side and you just kind of have to lay it there, make sure to pin it down or tape it down and then, or glue it down really, and then at this stage, then you can fuse it. But it is nice to have that stick down so you can move it around before you fuse. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. Oh, I'm happy to be back too. It's fun to see all of you guys again and chit chat. Hoping we can do some fun stuff this year um, on, on these Facebook Lives. All right, I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably fused enough. I wasn't sure if my iron was heating up anymore, but I, I think it's still on. I'm just kind of picking at the edge a little bit just to see if it's fused, and yeah, I think we're totally good to go. So I think, you guys, that that is where we're gonna stop for the night. We are perfectly fused. We got our cute little transparent little mixing bowls. This is gonna be fun to quilt. We could do all like decorative stuff in all these bowls. They could all be different. Ooh, that's gonna be fun. Ooh, we could even like quilt a little table here, maybe. And you know, a little picture frame in the background <laughs> or something, who knows. But I think it's, it's awfully sweet. So uh, tomorrow we're gonna be getting new blocks, but uh, luckily this is few, this will be an easy finish for one of these days that we need a, a quick finish. We'll just um, we'll do our stitching around the edge here, and um, then this guy will be done. After, I mean, we still have to trim it down to the six and a half inches, but. Um, it's fused. It can stay like this for a super long time without it being stitched down. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we are going to call it an evening. Hello, hello. It is, again, so nice seeing all of you again. I hope you had a great holiday, a great new year. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, if you want to have any uh, project ideas this year, be sure to let me know. And we'll for sure be doing tons of embroidery, tons of sewing. Uh, so we'll see what happens, you guys. Uh, but here is our cute little bowl. There, from closer up, you can see that yellow. From far away, I think I think the phone kind of corrects it a little bit. But cute! I like that brown in the middle. Oh, it's so sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, I love it. So this was the Nourish Block from the Splendid Sampler 2 book. Uh, I have a link on here if you want to get that book still. And then it's at thesplendidsampler.com. And if you check out the Splendid Sampler on Facebook, you'll be able to see tons of blocks that everyone is making and it's just so neat it's just inspirational to just see how the same block can look so different with the different colors and different people doing it it's really really fun so i will get this up on youtube if you want to watch this again and that's at penguin and fish movies on youtube and be sure to click subscribe when you're there and also it will stay here on facebook on the penguin and fish page and i hope you like it as well uh, and uh, I will be back tomorrow. We are back after the new year, which is awesome. So tomorrow, new block Thursday, and Friday is the Finish It Friday, the first Friday of the month. So we're going to play with my new knitting needles that I hopefully have by then. So awesome, guys. Have a great evening and have a great start to your new year. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.